Welcome to Festival Integration Diaries, day number 39, second last day folks. I thought I'd bring back the red star glasses, courtesy of Lauren Hill for this finale since I'm wearing a red top. I've actually just been to the gym so I'm a little bit sweaty still. Alrighty, so topic for today's Integration Diary is dun 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 dun, desire. It was a very bad rendition of a U2 song. Desire. Let's talk about desire. Hmm. Okay, so I'm a single woman. I broke up with my partner in end of April. So I've been single for nine months. And going on the festival tour, oh my goodness, there were so many, so many beautiful, attractive, sexy as fuck, epic amazing men and so I thought I'd talk about desire because you know sometimes women don't talk about these things and sometimes it's assumed that like women have less desire than men and particularly potentially older women and as I discussed two days ago um <laughs> uh, talking about aging the aging process because I'm now 47 and yesterday I talked about um, kind of Esther Hayden stuff, which is related to sexuality, etc. So it feels good to now dive into desire. Um, I practice Brahmacharya and have done since 2015. Brahmacharya is one of the Niyamas and it's in both the Tantric Niyamas and Yamas and also Padanjali's from Yoga Sutras, um, Yamas and Niyamas. And the way that I see it is that it is right relationship to sexual energy. I fucking love these glasses, i got to say. They're so cool. Thank you, Lauren. You're amazing. Um, when I put them on, like, everything looks different. Everything looks like I'm in the red light district. So appropriate. Um, so brahmacharya, right relationship to sexual energy. And, you know, so if you're in a relationship, it's different from, you know, if you're, if you're single. So the way that I operate is that... I retain all sexual energy all the time and I retain it and then I circulate it around my body and use it, right? All of this energy, all of this juiciness, it just gets flooded into my whole system and it comes out on the dance floor, you know, like I play in it and I express it and I dance with it and my creativity and yeah, just energy full stop. Um, and for the most part, I find that fairly easeful, even though I've identified in the past as someone with a, like a high sex drive, you could say. Um, and I find it fairly easy to be single now and not having any kind of casual interactions at all, because that's my choice. Um, whereas when I was in my twenties, I couldn't last more than like three weeks. If I went three weeks without sex, I'd be like, all right, I'm going out and I'm getting laid. Um, it was like three weeks was the maximum amount of time. And so when I was single, it was like, oh man, these numbers are going to start adding up quite soon. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And so, you know, rocking around the festival scene, um, I'm because, this is one of the reasons I chose to step into Brahmacharya. It was because I hit the festival scene in 2015 and I remembered what it had been like in my 20s. And, you know, I was single then in 2015 and I was just like, shit, this could get messy, you know, like, I don't want to look around and go, oh my God, I've slept with 20% of the men in the room or whatever, you know. Um, and so that was when I was like, right, I'm going to do a practice of brahmacharya and I'm going to have really clear boundaries for myself so that that doesn't happen. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, like, you know, one of my really good friends, like, um, yeah, I've got a great friend on the festival scene who totally embraces the desire for partners and rolls along with that and I remember being in the room with this person and looking around going I think this person slept with everyone of the opposite sex who's in the room um, and there's nothing again there's nothing wrong with that right particularly when there's good clear communication so my experience of desire on the festival tour over the five weeks was super interesting because hmm if I feel strong desire for a man who's in his 20s or 30s, you know, maybe up to 36, 37, I kind of have a policy where I don't initiate. Um, and that feels pretty good. 
it just feels like you know there is to a degree a power differential and I feel like mm, you know there's a part of me that's like when does it get creepy you know when does it get weird when is it like so I just have this internal policy of like don't initiate um which doesn't mean that I don't then necessarily get hit on by by people who are younger and that that's great um when it comes to men that are sort of 37 and above then I'm quite happy to initiate and I had this one experience where there was this man who was in his 40s and oh my god he I well I just found him so incredibly attractive and so I initiated you know contact and conversation ensued and I could just kind of feel this like energetic like whoa and the desire that started to run through my body was so fucking strong and I'm sitting beside him and literally my whole body just wants to move because it's the thing like normally when I feel desire I, I go into yoga practice I go into dance practice and I let the desire have my body as such I let it take me but I'm sitting beside him and he's a pretty clued on you know, clued in, switched on kind of guy. And I'm like starting to squirm a little bit. I'm like, oh my God, if I start like moving, he's going to know that I'm getting really turned on just by sitting beside him. And so I just kind of leapt up and ran off to dance. And the music was really awesome at that moment. The band was fucking epic. And I had so much energy that I just went, I, oh my God, I just went fucking crazy on the dance floor and just, just, just had an absolute blast it was amazing um but what I noticed was I had so much strong desire for him that it made me feel really shy and awkward around him and then what I noticed is because I felt I felt kind of shy and awkward and I felt vulnerable that I kind of went into a safety mechanism of going into like um my clear directive penetrative masculine oh my god I think I completely totally scared that guy off (laughs) oh so funny so funny so you know the the, yeah okay what other stories can I share about how I'm navigating desire um ah just taking a moment to center Mm, sunset here in Thames and it's so freaking beautiful and I did just go to the gym, had an amazing workout, workout. I did yoga and I jumped on the stepper while listening to um, Spear by Harry because I caught him on a talk show and he's a freaking interesting guy. I'm like, I'm totally listening to his um, memoir. So it's like 15 hours. I'm calculating how many times I need to go to the gym to get through that. Anyway, desires. So yeah, I had this practice of brahmacharya, although I got to admit there have been one two is there one more I think there might have been two or three times in the last seven years where I have decided and gone fuck it I'm just going to have casual interactions with this man because he's really hot and I really like him so I it you know it's a practice brahmacharya and there have been the odd times when I have um chosen deliberately chosen to to interact um with some very beautiful sexy men and you know what's interesting is those men are some of my best friends and we are still such good friends and I love them to bits and I, I mean I adore men. Oh three, I just thought of the other one. I knew there was another one. Um, yeah and you know and at the time when I'd made that choice I, I kind of knew that it was just a casual you know thing but a part of me was like well maybe it's not, maybe it's going to be more you know but I was like mm, okay accept what it is and let it be what it is without projecting or trying to make it more than it is or getting resentful or pissed off that it then doesn't become more than what it is um yeah and so there is space like there are times when I'm like maybe it would feel good to to you know have that dance to step into that dance with someone and when I was at one of the festivals on the very last night my body was humming it was so humming it was so alive and I was like hmm maybe I will actually step into something tonight because there were a few men around and I just had a sense that there was some potentiality there and I could feel it I was like oh maybe I will 
maybe I will. But then when I felt into it more and I really dropped down and sensed into it, it felt it felt dark. Not that dark is bad necessarily, but it just was like, no, don't don't go there. And one of the things about sexual interactions, right? Jumping into uh, just checking the time here. Got to keep these under 15 minutes for Instagram. One of the things about uh, sexual interactions is that from a yogic perspective, one of the things that's shared is that when you come together with someone sexually, that you're intermingling your karma. And then, the, you know, even if it's just a one-off time, there's, there's karma that's generated or, and created because of that. And of course, when I'm stepping into sexual relations, it's really fucking deep. Like it's an energetic thing all the way and so that's another reason why I choose not to have regular or casual interactions because I just I just don't want that extra stuff to to digest and when I was with my last partner beautiful man um, one of the things I felt was happening at certain points was because we were merging energetically sometimes when I was doing my practice which is very much an energetic emotional digestion practice I would start to sense and feel uh, sanskaras, like undigested emotional experiences in his energetic field and start to digest them. And of course, I want to do that. You know, I want to support him in that. Um, And I was, yeah, it was a really interesting thing for me feeling the ways in which our energetic bodies totally start to merge and overlap when we step into sexual relations with each other. So that's another um, thing that I'm aware of. So... As someone who's practicing brahmacharya and is sometimes dealing with a lot of sexual energy in the body, um, I have ways of dampening that energy down and I have ways of channeling that energy. Like, you know, I walk every single day, I go to the gym when I'm at home, um, I practice yoga at the gym and then I also have other practices that I do. I work with having a bath. Having a bath is a really good way to move energy around, etc. Um... And yeah, like I said, I channel that sexual energy, like it's life force. I channel it into my creativity and into my work. And, you know, occasionally, like I've been single a lot in the last 12 years. I've only been in relationship four out of those 12 years. And once with a guy that was lived overseas, you know, so that was a really interesting long distance relationship. And sometimes I'm like, oh my God, here I am. I'm, you know, like, am I in my prime? And I'm, I'm like wasting all this time when I could be having amazing sexual adventures. And then I remind myself that when I was in my twenties, I, I had a lot of amazing sexual adventures. So I'm kind of like, all right, I banked stuff. I put things in the bank, you know, and I know that when I get into, you know, my next relationship, that I will get to explore in those realms in the deepest freaking way. So I just wanted to say that one, women, and this really used to fuck me off when people had this idea that men have a higher sexual drive than women. Fuck that shit. I don't think that's true necessarily. And to make those sweeping broad gender generalizations, fuck that. It's entirely possible that women have just as high a sexual drive and may be suppressed or repressed because of conditioning, right? That's absolutely a thing. Um, and that's why conscious sexuality work is so needed. Um, and so often, last little piece, so often the reason we step into sexual interactions isn't really necessarily to express ourselves sexually, but it's coming from unmet, unconscious, sometimes conscious, needs around belonging or around loneliness or around validation or around worthiness and and all that stuff, and it gets really muddy. And so one of the really awesome benefits for me in practicing brahmacharya over the last seven years has been that it's really cleaned up my motivation for stepping into sexual interactions. So on those few times when I did choose to step into what was casual interactions, I was doing it in a very conscious way, not coming from insecurity, need for validation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Alrighty, we're almost at 15 minutes. I'd love to hear from you. How do you relate to desire, like sexual desire, sexual energy in the body? What is your relationship to sexual desire and sexual energy? Alrighty, I'm over and out. I'm uh, probably going to need to go and have a shower because I'm so freaking sweaty right now.